In this video, I'm going to show you how to reduce lambda terms. I made two examples. You see them on the left. I will only do one here, and the other one you can do as an exercise for yourself. So, how is this plus two one plus two one blah 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 lambda term? So let's just uh, quickly look at the structure of this term. So in the first line, we have the structure is given by three arguments. I call them x y z now because instead of plus two one, and then I just have. Uh, lambda XYZ. So this is the structure of the first line. And then the structure of the second line, I mean the second line, let me just not further analyze it, just call it, call it expression 1, and then I have expression 2, and then I have expression 3. So that's the structure of this lambda term. So how are we going to reduce this lambda term? So we have a function that's this one. And this function takes three arguments, and then we have three arguments. So the first step is to replace the variables x, y, z by the arguments e1, e2, e3. Okay, so now I really make use of doing this in an editor and not using this by hand. So I just copy paste this first. And now I'm taking the first placeholder variable here and replace it by the first argument. So I take the first argument and paste it in for plus. Oops, why does this not work? Yeah, now I work. Then I'm going to do the same thing to the second argument. So I copy paste the second argument for the second variable. And actually I make my window now a little bit bigger. And finally I take the third placeholder variable, first bound variable, and replace it by the remaining argument, which was the third argument. And that's it. So that's the first reduction, three reductions in one go. OK, so now um, we're not done yet. So I copy paste again. And let's see whether we can find another redex where we can perform some beta reduction. So actually, before we do the beta reduction, uh, let's do some alpha conversion. So if you if you look at the at the terms here, the first argument, and the second argument, and the third argument, then they all have variables called f and x, right? So the first argument has variables called f and x, and the second argument has variables called f and x, and uh, um, so does. Uh, the third uh, um, argument. Now all these variables are different. They're different placeholders, right? So for example, these two fx here have nothing to do with the fx here. The scope is completely disjoint. at different placeholders, even though they have the same name. Yeah, so the scope of a lambda ends with a closing parenthesis. So Right, so the fx in the first argument is completely different from the fx in the second argument is completely different from the fx in the third argument. So we can make this more visible by renaming them. So um, let me call these f2 and x2 here, because that's the second argument. And uh, let's do uh, the three here. Uh, 
Okay, so I delete this, copy this from here again, and I don't have to do this again. Okay. Okay, so now we all the different bound variables are really different, have different names, uh, which makes it kind of easier to navigate. And uh, now, okay, so we have to find a redex, a function, we have to find the placeholder variable, and then we have to find the first argument, the argument, and replace the variable by the argument. So we go left to right, and um, it's good to use the editor here to show us the closing parentheses. So this function, the first function, the, the whole thing doesn't have an argument, but the next function does have an argument, right? So we have something uh, called m here, and um, that's the variable. I navigate to the end of the function, and then everything between these parentheses is the first argument, or it's the argument of the function. Okay, so let's take this argument and replace it for the variable, which is called m. So I do this, and now uh, the m has to go, and I replace the m by the argument. And then I can do the same uh, for the n. So let's see. Okay, let's do this not too quickly. Let's just do another line here. Right, so I start over again, look for the closing parentheses, look for the closing parentheses. Remember that my variable here is called n. Navigate to the closing parentheses of this n. Okay, so now what's the argument that has to replace the n? It's what comes next, right? So again, I delete everything out to the closing parentheses. And I know that I have to replace the n. So the n goes away, and instead of the n, I put in my argument. Okay, so how do we go on? We keep on doing the same stuff until we don't find any further redex. So how do we find a redex? We start from the left, we navigate to the right. So, okay, so there's no argument for the f, right? So the variable here is called f. But if I look for the closing parentheses, I see there's no argument to the right of the closing parentheses. So I'm looking here, right? So there's no there's no argument here uh, which goes in here. So uh, so the f and the x don't have arguments. Let's see whether I find a function that have yes. So here's a function that takes an argument. You see where the parentheses closes, and so f the first lambda expression to the right of the closing parentheses is the argument. Okay, so let's take this argument and replace it for the bound value, which is called f2. So the f goes into the, uh, replaces the f2, we do substitution here, and to replace the f2 by an f just means to delete that twos here. Okay, that's it. Uh, let's do another one. So, let's see. So, this function, we we're looking for the closing parentheses. This function has variable x2, bound variable x2, and the argument is all of this. So, we have to just make sure that I get this right. Yeah, so I have to go up to here. Okay, and now what do I have to replace? I have to replace the x2. So I replace the x2. Let's do some, see whether we can find some more steps here. Actually, as you can tell, I've done this before, so I know there's some more, thing, more work to do. So again, so we start on the left, we go to the right, and we look for a redex, so we don't have an argument to the right of this closing parenthesis, 
But we do have two arguments going to the right of this closing parenthesis. And yeah, we have two corresponding bound values, F3 and X3. And these are the corresponding two arguments, F and X. And the F goes in for the F3. And the X goes in for the X3. So all we have to do is we have to replace the F3 by an F and the X3 by an X. And then these F, F and X are gone because they replace the F3 and the X3. So now I can compress this a bit. Let's do uh, this. And now we're finished, right? So there's no read X left. Um, we still have a function which takes arguments, but we don't have any arguments left, right? So there's no uh, there's no argument that could go in here. It would have to be it would have to be somewhere in here, but there's nothing there. So okay, so then we make it just a little bit nicer. We delete two parentheses to the left, and that means that we need to delete two parentheses to the right, and then we can also take out this parentheses. And now I think. Oops, we have two, one too many? No, that was okay. So now we have... Oh yeah, but we can take out this parenthesis, right? So we don't need parenthesis here. Yeah, so that looks actually not so terrible. And we are done. So... What have we done? If you actually look slightly more carefully, what you see is that the lambda term we call 2 here is the one... So they all start with F. They both start, both arguments start with lambda f, lambda x, right? So that's the same. But then they, they're different in the number of s's, f's, f's. So the lambda term that we call 2 is the one with the two f's. That's why we call it 2. And the lambda term called 1 is the one which has one f here. And if you do the whole computation, you see that we actually end up with a lambda, lambda term that has 3f, right? So we start with 2 and 1, and we get 3, and this explains why we call this lambda term, the first lambda term here, plus. But what it's doing is kind of adding the number of f's in the lambda term, uh, 2 and 1. So this is called the church encoding of the numbers, and it shows you that you can do arithmetic in the lambda calculus with only using substitution and alpha renaming as your only computation rules, right? So we've nothing used but substitution and a bit of renaming. So to see whether you can do these kind of computations yourself, I've made a different example. It's roughly the same length to, uh, um, for the computation. And uh, yeah, I think from the name, you can probably guess which lambda term you will get, right? So if I call it mult23, so how many Fs do you expect in the result in the end? So yeah, that should give you um, a way of checking whether you've done the computation correctly. Thanks for watching.